At the bottom of the deepest hole in the world, something is waiting for us. If someone had told me a couple years ago that my obsession with rocks would land me in a Chinese prison, I would have said probably not. But here I am. I used to be your average geologist when I saw the research ad. A university in Beijing was looking for a deep earth specialist for a multi-year project. So of course I signed up right away. Jobs like that are pretty hard to come by in my field. So as soon as I was accepted, I started packing immediately. Moving across the world was hard, but I didn't care who was backing my research. I just wanted to work with people who saw the value in my expertise. Well, they saw how important I was all right. One minute I was studying some weird reports of seismic activity in the northern provinces. Next minute, I was surrounded by Chinese special forces. They told me they found proof that I was a spy. One day later, I was locked up in some high security prison cell. I never saw any of this proof, by the way. But I stayed there for a week before they came to me with a deal. That day, I was trying to figure out if the damp patch on the wall was getting bigger or if I was losing it. And that's when somebody opened the cell door and walked in. He was dressed in a lab coat and he looked like he'd rather be anywhere but here right now. Peter, he started, his voice flat. I'm Dr. Zhang. The government has a proposition for you. Yeah, I asked. Not like I had many options to begin with. Yes, my team has just completed drilling the world's deepest hole, he said, as if he was talking about something as normal as digging a garden pond. It's a significant achievement, he continued. But before we make it public, we need to ensure it's safe for further exploration. Huh, and let me guess, you want me to play the guinea pig because I'm expendable, I asked. Well, something like that, he replied. You're a geologist. Who better to assess a geological project? What's in it for me? I asked, though part of me was already buzzing. Scary government prison aside, I always dreamed of exploring someplace no one had ever been. A reduced sentence and a position in a government research team. If you succeed and survive, of course, he replied. Survive, huh? They really knew how to sell a dream. But he was right. This sounded like a job for someone like me. I had the skills, the passion, and the motivation to get the hell out of here. All right, I'm in, I said. When do we start? Good, good, we start tomorrow. Get some rest, he said. And he turned away and walked out as quickly as he'd arrived. I stayed awake that night and couldn't sleep. I was gonna go deeper into the earth than anyone else had ever been before. This was real exploration, you know? It felt terrifying, but at the same time, I was excited. They transferred me to a facility near the excavation site the next day. It was there that I met the other two guys who were a part of my team. It seemed they each had their own reasons for agreeing to this suicide mission. We were given a brief rundown by a team of scientists who looked at us more like lab rats than people. The depth, the pressure, potential gas pockets, unstable rock formations, it was a lot to take in. I asked Dr. Zhang the one thing they didn't mention in the briefing as we were gearing up. So just how deep is this hole? I asked. The deepest, he said, as he checked his clipboard. That's all he would say. And it didn't help me feel any better. We approached the pit from where I was standing. All I could see was a massive open gap in the earth. I looked over the edge, and it felt like staring into a pool of nothing. I heard deep rumbling sounds coming from the darkness. 
It felt more like we were going to get swallowed up by some monster. The techs around me snapped the last bit of equipment in place. This was it. I was about to go to a place that no light had ever touched. I was scared, but part of me couldn't wait to see what was down there. I wanted to see something new and learn more about the planet we called home. We would be going down in a team of three. Zhang explained that this was to limit casualties. Our instructions were clear. Use code names, no personal chit chat, just focus on the job. This was serious business, not a time to make friends. Alpha was our muscle and an ex-soldier. He was a big and quiet man that carried all our stuff. Beta, yeah, I know, was a skinny engineer who never stopped frowning. He was always busy checking our equipment to make sure everything was working. We had supplies to last a week. Good luck, men. This is for all of humanity. Remember that. Make us proud, okay? Dr. Zhang said as he smiled at us. And with that, we began our descent into the world's deepest hole. Our radio connection to the surface got weaker the deeper we got. It died soon enough, and we were on our own. We were equipped with body cams and sensors that would be recording everything we saw or did down there. We were surrounded by nothing but rock and darkness as we went down. It felt like dropping into hell. A caged metal elevator carried us down. Thick ropes connected us to a series of pulleys operated by the guys upstairs. They seemed to hold our weight pretty well, but I still couldn't help but wince every time they creaked. Our only source of light were our headlamps. I felt more and more isolated the deeper we got. The earth above us felt heavy. The light from our headlamps barely reached the walls around us. This place felt old and untouched. It was clear that this wasn't a place for humans. And I couldn't shake this feeling that we were trespassing somehow. The ride down felt like it lasted forever. Hours passed as we went deeper and deeper. The air got colder, and the only sounds were the scrape of rock against metal. We all felt uneasy. It was like the earth itself didn't want us there. I reached out and touched the wall of the hole. It was rough and snagged my gloves. The surface was cold and slightly damp, like it was sweating. I felt slight tremors as I touched it. They were subtle, but they were there. It almost felt like the ground was breathing, like the hole was alive. We all felt it, but nobody said a word. We finally reached the bottom after what felt like years underground. The elevator stopped, and we walked out to hot air blowing around us. I knew it was from the geothermal vents surrounding the place. I walked around as the other two began offloading our supplies. The cave was dark and dusty, so much so that I made little smoke clouds as I walked. And then I found it, an opening. It wasn't big, but it was definitely a natural cave entrance. The edges were smoother than the drilled rock of the shaft, worn away by time and water. I called the others over. Looks like we found something, I said. We all looked at the cave entrance. We couldn't see anything beyond the glow from our headlamps and decided that there was no use just standing around. Curiosity was getting the better of us, despite the unease. We geared up and prepared to enter the cave system. The tremors became more noticeable 
the deeper we got into the cave. They weren't strong enough to make us turn back, but there was a strange regularity to them. It was as if they were following a strange pattern. I didn't remember reading anything about this. In all my years of research, it made me wonder what kind of natural phenomenon could cause such a thing. As we walked deeper into the cave, I noticed something glowing in the distance. It was a faint blue light, but I couldn't see much due to our headlamps. I asked the others if we could turn them off for a second, and they agreed. In a flick of a switch, we turned our lights off and found the source of the glow. Spread across the entire cave was a glowing blue fungus. The soft blue light coming from it, it was strangely magical. They formed a path down the tunnel, illuminating the sprawling cave system beyond us. I was busy admiring the fungus up close when a sudden movement startled me. I whipped my head around to see a strange creature near a pool of water. It looked humanoid, but it was unlike any person I had ever seen. It was thin, with sagging pale skin. Its arms were so long that they dragged across the floor. I saw it bend over water and cup its hands to drink. The hands were alarmingly human-like. Its bony fingers joined together as it brought water to its cracked lips. And that's what shocked me the most about the creature. How much that action looked human, intelligent. Without thinking, I took a step towards the creature. But it must have heard me, because before I could do anything, it hissed at me and ran off. I tried to tell Alpha and Beta about what I saw, but I couldn't get their full attention. We just stumbled into another obstacle. It was an ancient mechanical lock attached to a large stone door. It looked like it hadn't been touched in centuries. The lock itself was a complex network of gears and levers. There were symbols around the lock that had been carved into the stone, but I couldn't tell if they were instructions or warnings. Scattered around were piles of bones. Some were clearly animal bones, small, delicate ribs and skulls, but there were human remains too. Several skulls sat at the base of the door. Everything was illuminated by that same blue glow that covered the cave walls. It seemed to glow brighter here. I knelt down to better examine the lock. I wanted to see if I could open it, or at least understand the mechanism better. But then we heard it. A soft shuffling noise in the distance. And along with it, sharp hissing noises that almost sounded like some sort of language. They echoed through the cave walls, getting closer. I spun around, and I saw what was making these noises. Humanoid creatures poured out of the tunnel in a swarm. They were packed in tight, like a wave of flesh. I could see now that they didn't have eyes. Instead, they had long, narrow slits on their faces that sniffed at the air and mouths full of razor-sharp teeth. The creatures moved by pulling themselves along the tunnel floor. They sniffed the air, and their hissing grew louder and more aggressive as they shuffled closer. We started to panic. Beta and I tried to work out how to unlock the door, but the mechanism was full of complicated levers and gears. Meanwhile, Alpha stood between us and the creatures. He had his gun out. He tried to keep it steady. But I could see even his hands were shaking. The lock was unlike anything I'd ever seen. It was glowing with the same blue fungus that lit up the cave. It looked almost alive. 
The creatures were getting closer. I could hear their raspy breathing echo throughout the tunnel. Alpha yelled at us to hurry up. I could hear his voice tremble. Beta continued to fiddle with the lock. I could see him moving the gears around. And then suddenly, one of the creatures jumped at Alpha. Its long snake-like arms reached out for his throat. He fired his gun, and he hit the creature square on the chest. A spray of that glowing blue sludge erupted from the creature. The loud bang echoed down the tunnels. But that only seemed to bring more of them. Soon, the creatures swarmed from every direction. They poured out of the tunnels and dropped from the roof. Their bodies twisted and writhed as they crowded towards us. The ones at the front of the pack were only a few feet from Alpha now. He fired off a warning shot when the door started to move. Beta had finally figured out the lock. Inch by inch, the giant door creaked open. Without wasting a second, Beta shoved me through. Alpha fired round after round, trying to hold back the flood of creatures. He shouted at Beta to move his ass. Behind him, I could hear the machine gun and the creatures hissing. Beta quickly crawled through the gap in the door. From the other side, I turned back just in time to see a creature reach Alpha. It grabbed him by the throat and pulled. Alpha choked and stumbled, but with a final burst of strength, he aimed his gun at the lock and fired. One of the creatures was trying to crawl through the opening, but as Alpha hit the lock, the door slammed shut. The creature was torn in two, spraying the wall with that glowing blue slime. It twitched for a second before finally dying. As Beta and I leaned against the cold stone wall, catching our breath, the sounds from the other side of the door filled me with dread. Hissing, screaming, and the unmistakable sound of gunfire. And then abruptly, it all stopped. The silence that followed was almost worse. In that moment, a deep sadness washed over me. Me and Alpha, we hadn't known each other well, but he'd sacrificed his life so that we could escape. I don't know what the hell he did to land him a spot on this suicide mission, but at that moment, it didn't matter. I put a hand on the door, thanking him. As I scanned our surroundings, it became clear that the walls here were smeared with the same glowing blue substance. That told me a couple things. One, that there's more of these monsters here. And two, that there must be other passages that they're using to move around. And that means that there must be some other way out of here. So our best bet of getting out would be to follow the glowing blue sludge. I talked to Beta about the glowing stuff and possible hidden passages. He nodded, agreeing with me, and we continued down the tunnel. As we walked, we noticed carvings on the walls. They were intricate and ancient, with swirling patterns and strange symbols that looked like an ancient language. There were carvings of human figures too, but with unusually long arms that spiraled. And then one scene showed these figures surrounding a massive tower. These look familiar. Beta said, looking closely at the carvings. I, I've seen something like this before in some caves in the Middle East. Wait, what do you mean? I asked. He kept his flashlight on the carvings. My wife was an archaeologist, he began. 
We were a research team, and I followed her to every dig and cave. I always said I'd follow her to the ends of the world. If only she knew. But then she got really sick. And that's why I'm here. The Chinese government, they offered me a deal to join this expedition. In exchange, they promised to take care of her. No matter what happens to me, he said. As Beta and I went deeper into the tunnel, the wall seemed to throb with more of the glowing blue. It was as if the tunnel itself was alive. The further we went, the stronger the tremors became. They shook the ground beneath our feet with a persistent rumble. Eventually, the narrow tunnel widened into a massive cavern. As Beta and I stepped into the cavern, we noticed a massive rock formation. It towered above us. It looked as high as a skyscraper. And the more I looked, the more I saw that this tower wasn't just a single block of stone. It was made up of multiple towers, each stretching high into the darkness of the cavern. And the whole thing was covered in that glowing blue slime. The formation had huge holes in it, each one big enough to drive a truck through. From these giant openings, more of those long armed humanoid creatures kept coming out. The cavern walls were full of openings and tunnels where the creatures moved in and out freely. The tremors here were stronger than anywhere else had been. Each one felt like it shook the Earth's foundation. After a very strong tremor, I noticed that the shaking seemed to come from within the rock itself. Hot steam burst from openings, clouding the air and filling the cavern with a hissing sound as the walls vibrated. We chose a tunnel that seemed less active than the others. It was as good a choice as any to get out of here. We moved carefully, ducking from one boulder to the next as we made our way deeper. Suddenly, the formation shuddered again. It was a deep rumble that echoed through the cavern and it shook the floor we were standing on. I peeked through an opening and I saw what was hiding under the rock formation. It was a huge, fleshy creature. It was covered in the glowing blue slime. Each time the creature shuddered, huge black orbs squeezed out of those holes. As I watched, I realized what I was looking at. This place. It was a nest, and that thing under the rock formation, it was like its queen. The mother that would keep giving birth to more and more of these things. As we watched, more shiny black orbs tumbled out of the queen. They spilled out and rolled across the cavern floor. One of them rolled right to where we were. Beta quickly moved forward and knelt down beside the orb. He explained that part of his mission was to collect a biological sample from these creatures. He and his wife had found similar orbs all over the world during their archaeological digs. But the ones they'd found were old and fossilized. The government wanted him to collect a fresher sample. I did not think this was a good idea, but carefully, Beta pulled out a small toolkit and began to scrape at the orb. He caught tiny black flakes in his test tube. He was gentle, trying not to puncture the egg. But as Beta collected the sample, the orb started to put out this awful smell. It reminded me of rotten eggs. It filled the air 
making it hard to breathe without gagging. I looked around, and I saw that whatever it was, it was attracting those long-armed creatures. They sniffed the air and hissed as they moved closer. Before I could warn Beta, one of them jumped at him from the shadows. It moved with terrifying speed. Its long, snake-like arms reached out. It grabbed him around the waist, pulling him to the ground with incredible force. The creature started dragging him away towards one of the larger tunnels. Take the sample! Beta yelled at me as he struggled against the creature's grip. Get it to the surface! I took the small container and I wanted to help him. Beta was fighting back hard. He reached for a large rock, trying to hit the creature to break free. But then more creatures came. A second one violently twisted, and it tore his arm off. Blood spurted everywhere and he screamed. The creatures weren't just randomly attacking. They were working together and reacting to us. They were smart. I wanted to help him, but within seconds, there were dozens of them on him. The creatures hissed, and I could hear Beta's screams behind me as I ran. A sharp metallic scent filled the air. It was blood. Confused, I realized I'd circled back to the tunnel where Alpha had made his last stand. I looked around, but I saw no signs of the body, just blood. But I didn't have time to think about that. I could hear the creatures hissing and chasing me from behind. I kept on running, trying my best to remember where the cave entrance was. Finally, I reached the open area where we'd arrived. I ran straight for the metal platform that had taken us down into this nightmare. The platform had a hand-operated lever. That was my ticket back up. I grabbed it and I started cranking as fast as I could. Below me, I could hear the sounds of the creatures coming out of the tunnel. Their hisses and screams got louder. When I looked down, I saw a mass of pale, twisted bodies spilling out into the open. They rushed towards the platform, but I was already moving up. They formed a giant, moving mass of flesh right beneath me. They stretched their arms towards me, and they tried to pull me back down. I cranked the lever faster, taking quick breaks before forcing myself to continue. Each time I paused, the sounds of the creatures grew even louder. A few minutes went by, and ever so slowly, the sounds began to fade away. After what seemed like forever, the platform finally started moving on its own. I realized the surface team must have noticed I was coming up. I was so relieved that I collapsed right there. As the platform reached the surface, the sunlight was blinding. Dr. Zhang and the rest of the research team were waiting for me. I was sweaty, dirty, and I looked terrified, but he didn't care about any of that, and he reached out for the container. Did you get it? Were his first words to me. I nodded, handing over the sample. He asked if I'd recorded data. Yeah, yeah, it's all here, I said, pointing to the gear strapped to my back. It had recorded everything we'd gone through. Dr. Zhang seemed relieved, even pleased. <sighs> this is a much better result than the Russian expedition, he said, as he examined the sample closer. Governments all over the world have tried to see what's down there, you know. But all previous attempts have failed, he said. I was too tired to fully process his words, 
But they hinted at a larger, more complex operation than I'd realized. Dr. Zhang looked back at me, and for a moment he hesitated before saying, Peter, considering what you've been through and the success of your retrieval, I'd like to offer you a spot as a permanent researcher with us. The offer took me by surprise. Part of me wanted nothing more than to walk away and never think about the creatures or the caves down there ever again. But the part of me that was a scientist, it wanted nothing more than to study this. Just think about it, Dr. Zhang added. You know, you're the first person to see what's down there and survive. That makes you the world's leading expert. And we could use someone with your experience. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Special thanks to all my patrons. If you'd like to become a supporter and get the audiobook early access version of upcoming stories, there's a link to my Patreon below. Thanks for watching and have a good night.